subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeji Chonsong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 28th of October. Prime Minister Modi bats for mutual cooperation to secure ties during COVID-19 pandemic at ASEAN India Summit. Pakistan declares banned Islamist group TLP as militant outfit following violent clashes. And In Kabul Children's Hospital Madik struggle with staff shortages. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday addressed the 18th ASEAN India Summit via video conferencing. PM Modi touched upon a range of key issues including COVID-19 pandemic, trade South China Sea issue and stressed how ASEAN members play an important role in India's vision for the Indo-Pacific. The 10 member nations unity and centrality has always been an important priority for India he added Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday attended the 18th ASEAN India summit via video conferencing at the invitation of current chair Brunei Addressing the summit virtually, Prime Minister underlined the centrality of ASEAN in India's Act East policy and in India's vision for the wider Indo-Pacific vision. On COVID-19, the Prime Minister highlighted India's efforts in the fight against the pandemic in the region and also reiterated support for ASEAN's initiatives in this regard. COVID-19 महामारी के कारण हम सभी को अनेक चुनौतियों से जूझना पड़ा लेकिन यह चुनौतीपूर्ण समय भारत आसियान मित्रता की कसौटी भी रहा कोविड के काल में हमारा आपसी सहयोग आपसी संवेदना भविष्य में हमारे संबंधों का बल देते रहेंगे The leaders exchanged views on enhancing India-ASEAN connectivity in broadest terms including physical, digital and people to people. The discussions also covered regional and international issues of common interest and concern including South China Sea and terrorism. India's Foreign Ministry Secretary East Riva Ganguly Das later in a press briefing said Prime Minister Modi has invited the ASEAN members to join the Indo-Pacific initiative. On Wednesday, PM Modi virtually addressed the 16th East Asia Summit where he reaffirmed India's focus on a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific and the principle of ASEAN centrality in the region. At least 8 people were killed and several injured after a bus fell into a gorge in Doda district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday. Rescue teams immediately reached the site and pressed into action and the injured were rushed to the hospitals. At least 8 people were killed and several injured on Thursday after a minibus reportedly went out of the driver's control and fell into a deep gorge in Doda district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. Rescue teams were immediately pressed into action at the accident site on Doda Thatri road and all the injured had been rushed to a local hospital an official said. Jammu and Kashmir's Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha said he was monitoring the situation and assured of every possible assistance. हम उधर पार थे तो जब उधर से गाड़ी आवाज आई हमको हमने गाड़ी देखी तो उधर से गाड़ी सीधी एक पलटा खाया उसने तो सीधी नीचे आ गई नीचे आ गई तो तीन चार पलटे खाते खाते गाड़ी इधर आ गई सवारियां कुछ इधर कुछ उधर मतलब गिरी हैं Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also expressed grief over the incident and announced an exgratia of nearly 2660 US dollars each to the next of the kin of the deceased. The hilly Doda district is infamous for its treacherous roads on which overloading and rash driving often result in fatal accidents. 
The Pakistan government has declared banned Islamist party TLP that the Harik e Labbaik Pakistan as a militant outfit after at least four policemen were killed and hundreds wounded in fresh clashes on Wednesday. The government has also deployed paramilitary rangers for 60 days to deal with TLP supporters protesting to demand expulsion of the French envoy over caricatures published in magazine in France which they consider blasphemous. The Pakistan government on Wednesday announced it has decided to declare TLP the Tehreek-e-Labbaik Pakistan as a militant outfit after at least four policemen were killed and hundreds wounded in fresh clashes between supporters of the banned Islamist party and police in Punjab province prompting Prime Minister Imran Khan's government to deploy paramilitary rangers in the province for 60 days to deal with anti-blasphemy demonstrators marching towards capital Islamabad Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed said the government has categorically decided it will not meet the TLP's demand of closing down the French embassy in Pakistan over the publication of a series of caricatures depicting the Prophet Muhammad by a French satirical magazine and stated there was no French ambassador currently in Pakistan Punjab hukumat jahan chahe wo rangers ko istemal kar sakti hai aur main 24 hour 24 hour jab main kehta hu to main sari subah 3 baj ke 30 minute par maine unse mamlaat kiya hai aur unse kaha ke mulk ke halaat dekhein हम फ्रांस एम्बेसी को न बंद कर सकते हैं और उसका एम्बेसडर यहाँ है ही नहीं है थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टी एल पी एक्टिविस्ट हैव बीन ब्लॉकिंग पाकिस्तान बिजिएस्ट हाईवे नियर लाहौर सिटी सिंस लास्ट फ्राइडे डिमांडिंग द रिलीज ऑफ देर लीडर साध हुसैन रिजवी एंड द एक्सपल्शन ऑफ द फ्रेंच एम्बेसडर ओवर द कैरिकेचर्स विच आर कंसिडर्ड डीपली इंसल्टिंग बाई मुस्लिम Pakistan's Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry said on Wednesday the government would even use force to block the Islamists from entering the capital Islamabad. Moving on, locals in Gilgit Baltistan have lamented government apathy to develop infrastructure in the illegally occupied region. They claim since the Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf party came to power in Gilgit Baltistan, no developmental work has been initiated. and blame that the government is making no serious attempts to address the demands for even basic amenities leaving them to suffer locals in gilgit baltistan have lamented pakistan prime minister imran khan's ruling pti the pakistan state aqn saf party's government apathy to initiate any projects to develop infrastructure even after over 11 months of coming to power in the region Locals claim that lack of proper roads, health and other basic facilities over the years has left the region as one of the most backward areas. They blame the corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the illegally occupied region, leaving its future in dark. Wazrala ke directives pe 11 arab rupaye taamir aur tarqi ki mat pe Hafiz Abdul Rahman ke through yahan lage hain jisme बड़े बड़े असली ब्रिजेस है जिसमें यूनिवर्सिटी कैंपस है आपने देखा कि गुब्ज यासिर को हमने जिला बनाकर नोटिफिकेशन जारी करके उसके लिए फंड भी मुख्त करके रख दिया था उसको भी उन्होंने इस्तीफा का शिकार किया है इसी तरह ये रोड जो गजर एक्सप्रेस वे था ये हमारा प्रोजेक्ट है पाकिस्तान मुस्लिम लीग नून का प्रोजेक्ट है इसको दो मरतबा उन्होंने ए डी पी से काटा अभी बना रहे कह रहे सर्वे पे सर्वे कर रहे हैं लेकिन हमें कहीं दूर भी तक नजर नहीं Locals say they have now become increasingly intolerant of the Pakistani occupation as Islamabad consistently maintains a negligent attitude towards the illegally occupied territory and ignores even their basic demands. A news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's hospitals are grappling with the fallout of its rapidly spreading economic crisis. In capital Kabul's main children's hospital, the crumbling of country's health system can be seen in the eyes of the exhausted staff who have remained in the city, aching out their fast diminishing stocks of medicines. This is the main children's hospital in Afghan capital Kabul, where medical staff are squeezing three babies into a single incubator because they don't have enough supplies. Nurses who wants to care of 3 or 4 babies each at the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital are now having to look after 20 or more 
to make up for the absence of staff who fled the country when the Taliban seized power in August. Crowds of mothers and sick and malnourished children filled the waiting rooms of the hospital. Dr. Mohammad Latif Bahar, Assistant Director of the Indra Gandhi Hospital, said officials from the United Nations Children Agency UNICEF have given some help, but more is needed quickly to fill the shortage of medicines and supplies to treat malnourished children. و از نظر مشکلات دیگه که در سطح شفاخانه داریم مشکل دوایی است و مشکل بخش مریضای های سویت تغذیه ماست که با کمبود مواد تغذیه مواجه است. Although the number of patients have fallen since the fighting ended, Afghanistan's hospitals are grappling with the fallout of its rapidly spreading economic crisis. UN agencies say as much as 95% of the population does not regularly have enough to eat. Meanwhile, the lack of support from the 600 million US dollars project administered by the World Bank have left thousands of facilities unable to buy supplies and pay salaries. For mothers like Arzu, they just want to save their children. She has already lost one of her five children to malnourishment-related illness and is unwilling to lose another. Moving on to news from Nepal. The Nepal Supreme Court Chief Justice Cholendra Samsher Rana has refused to resign from his post amidst allegations that he helped his brother-in-law secure a berth in Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba's cabinet as a reward for invalidating the move of former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's government to dissolve parliament twice, triggering an unusual judicial crisis. Fifteen justices of the Supreme Court has asked him to quit in the face of the recent controversies surrounding him. All Supreme Court justices have been boycotting benches starting Monday, while the associations of lawyers also have decided not to show up in the hearings demanding Rana's resignation, just as there are thousands of cases pending. Rana has rejected the charges leveled against him and even refused to resign from his post. Meanwhile, as routine business remains stalled, hearing of cases at the Supreme Court is being conducted only by Rana's single bench. According to the Constitution provision, 25% of the lawmakers in the House of Representatives can file an impeachment motion against the Chief Justice, and it requires a two-third majority vote to endorse the impeachment motion, leading to the removal of the Chief Justice. In delight for foot lovers, an aircraft-themed restaurant remodeled out of a passenger airplane has opened up in India's western Vadodara city. Customers can enjoy eating on board in a flight while not actually flying and the staff also functions like a cabin crew. An aircraft-themed restaurant named High Fly has been opened up in Vadodara city of India's western Gujarat state. The owner of the restaurant said he purchased an Airbus 320 from a company in Bengaluru city to build the restaurant. Foodies looking for new and amusing restaurant experiences can enjoy eating on board while not actually flying. Just like the way one boards to fly at the airport, visitors entering the restaurant are given a boarding pass like a flight ticket and staff also dresses to resemble air hostesses and stewards. यहां पे हम लोग ने थोड़ा एक अलग से नया फूड भी रखा है जैसे इटालियन मैक्सिकन थाई फूड भी जो है इसमें एडिशनल किया है ताकि लोगों को फ्लाइट में बैठे तो जैसे इंटरनेशनल जो होते हैं खाना बाहर का ताकि वो भी उनको करे तो रियल एक फीलिंग वहां पे आए कि एरोप्लेन में ही हम लोग बैठे हैं और यहां आकर देखा तो बहुत सारा प्लान था तो प्लान में ओनर से बात की कि हमको प्लान दिखाओ अंदर से तो ओनर हमको ले गए प्लेन में तो प्लेन में जाके देखा तो ऐसा लगा कि हम सच में ही प्लेन में बैठे हैं। Sensors have also been installed inside the aircraft, just like a flight to call a waiter. The aircraft restaurant can accommodate 106 people at a time. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.